Over we go. <laughs> One and done. That's it. <laughs> goodness we've got a very very special episode for you today because we have got an actual person not just a voice with us today this is our producer Sean hello thank you very much for having me on it'll it'll be a one time deal (laughs) yeah Yeah. I've had to pay through the (laughs) To get on here, he's the bravery he, from the moment from the moment that we met you, just dying for it. Um, but uh, we're so we're so happy to have you here. Oh, thank you. I can't believe you started. I didn't think we were started yet, but well, we're started. Here we we're here. We're queer, and we're talking to Sean. Yeah. Well, you're fresh off your big gig last night in the Ulster Sports Club. Yes, mm-hmm. we we're playing in the out of office uh, brewery. Um, up on the top floor we were doing a gig for So Far Sounds which mm. is sort of like this um, intimate gig thing that they do all around the world really So Far is like a massive company and uh, they host these uh, sorry I should be more aware of this table <laughs> stop <laughs> touching the table if you ever come on this podcast don't touch it it's about to fall off great crack but very wonky table <laughs> so, they, so they do intimate gigs um, like everywhere. all over the place yeah, yeah. and uh, they get artists to share a, a few songs it's not like a big long concert it's uh, not one of these things the whole ideology is that they want to have a concert where people aren't you know just sitting talking or like out in a smoking area and like sort yeah. of half enjoying the music and yes. half just there to get drunk it's more sort of like right let's sit down listen to the music and hear an artist talk about what the music's about and actually hearing each wee in- intricate part of the music yeah um so it's a great idea and um something i've observed from the outside for a long time and but didn't really think that that was our crowd uh-huh. you know because like for best part of the band's life it would have been like these like crusty like pu- this crusty punk band you know that plays in the war zone center you know yeah mm. so that was a wee bit high bro for us and, and just didn't but now i feel like confident enough in in our music that we can like sit down and like have people have it exposed and have people pick it apart like that so it was oh. a good wee hurdle to get over having that kind of setup though really is gorgeous there's something lovely about like someone not um uh going mad in some corner somewhere or shouting or mm. it felt just so um it felt so very civilized yeah and so it, enjoyable and it's truly intimate yeah. yeah yeah and it was nice too because because there's a focus then on the music and really truly the artist you're not just filling the room you're not just yeah. um there to sort of create the atmosphere because there's that then you then get the opportunity to talk you didn't fuck up <laughs> no. you were really good <laughs> and i was holding that. back like fuck. <laughs> <laughs> i was really holding back like they kept saying to me don't overdo it yeah, like, don't, and they I, were on board though, uh, and I, I says okay. I know I, I promised them I wouldn't, and I was like one story. Like, yeah. So and I got that in, but yeah, like and here I love the the big high energy, like going out and being like, what's fucking happening? Yeah. And like yeah. and having limbs all over the place. I love that too. That's that's actually my favorite thing. But that was a change of pace, and yeah. it sort of it was a wee bit of too to yeah. be like we're like we're that confident in our art that we can also do this thing mm-hmm. you know well as an audience member like we, we I mean a new, like, new groupie actually yes yes. I love the top you can yeah. get your search party merch you can get it on Spotify can you get it yeah. on the website yeah. there's that, like the, the, it's the, all the, integrated the, yeah it feels very soft and lovely fits me very nice that is um, <laughs> as made well they're the finest pre mark t-shirts you'll ever buy oh wow <laughs> um, you're going to get us cancelled oh, yeah. pre mark cares so <laughs> oh, they care now. Uh, Perfect. But, but uh, printed printed by the one only my sister, Jackie Donnelly. Oh, <laughs> so, sweetie. Does she run does she run like a print business? Uh yeah, she um cool. she just uh, runs a wee print business from What's it called? Um she just runs it out of my mummy's alteration shop. So nice. it doesn't actually have a name. What's your mummy's alteration shop called? So perfect. Oh. Where is that? Um, it's up in Work West and yeah. on the yeah. Green Road. Yeah, yeah. Oh well, we've we've now got a, a on demand printer. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah that's that'd be great. To hear. Uh, so J- Jackie helps me a wee bit with the sewing, but she also like prints stuff for like you know um, 
like t-shirts for like Hindus or like Christians and cool. and these gorgeous ones. We must uh, and she's our official merch supplier. Oh well, Gosh. we must uh, meet your mum at some stage as well yeah. then, because that sort of seems like it'll tie into our future project. But enough yeah, of that for no. now. As as an audience member last night, I could say we haven't really interacted that much with gigs and live music and going out and things like that for the past six years because we haven't had a. A, a bean, you know, to be able to go mm. and do that. But uh, been able to go last night, and we're sort of a wee bit almost scared of like bandy guitar music because we're just both a pair of like old I'm, ravers. I'm Mate actually, old, you I'm not, frightened of it. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's I like are we not going to get it? Even back or... to the Johnny Tiernan episode, of you guys chatting away and you chatting about bands, and you're like, oh, and these guys came on, and then we 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 used to work with these guys, or we was in this band. No clue, not yeah. the world that we're from. <laughs> um, but I'd heard your music before. And yeah, I we knew that it was, I kind of can't place it. You know, you kind of try to attach it where you're like, it's a bit of this and it sounds a bit more like this and something else. Yeah. It re- it's really eclectic. Yeah. Um, but we had heard your Nicole song. I think that was the first song that yeah. we had ever heard. And watching you sing, or you guys perform that and then watching Nicole just like, my, just, it was so, it was one of the sweetest moments <laughs> ever. And, and like, so, and I got great joy from, uh, there was uh, one of our, our friends was there uh, who we worked with in Belfast 24 sitting beside us. And I was able to go, so, the backstory is Nicole is Sean's wife and Nicole is sitting over there and yeah. she's like, <laughs> she's wonderful as well and we're all biz and they're married and they're expecting a baby in April and it's all very and they were just like oh my god heart eyes the whole yeah. thing we love that we love that um that gesture and it's really really beautiful but it doesn't um take away from the quality of the music at the same yeah. time Thank we were you. also all biz whenever you played your new song paradise and we were like the only people in the in the room apart from like the band and nicole and your friends and things like that that knew the words we were well, the only punters that could kind of sing along because we got to hear it with you let, in here yeah. last week let's get it straight because we we were basically we were making our way around um out of office last night and just telling everyone number one that we're your groupies <laughs> And, yeah, um, Nicole, to, Nicole loved that. Yeah, and that we're close personal yeah. friends with Sean, you know, with the hair. And Teddy's are getting insane. Yeah. yeah, I actually Connor today, was I was like, do I, do, I, do I wear a shirt? I didn't have a shirt that I could wear, but do I wear a shirt? And I, I'll get Sean to sign my Teddy's live, but we'll do it. That'll be another, there's so many things that we've promised to Patreon, but whenever yeah. we get our shit together and we get it going, you'll get to see my nipples. Yeah. You know what, we, so we got to, we got to watch, uh, got to watch you last night and you also then within that um, played that song that we had heard. Paradise. Uh, Paradise. First, so it's Paradise it's called. Mm-hmm. Tell me this, did we, so we were going about the bar, we were telling people that we, you were, that, we, that we were your groupies, but we were also telling people that we heard that song first in the world. Mm-hmm. So you went, you recorded it in the studio, it was then sent back to you as the final Mix. Down, uh, yeah, mix like, or uh, a, a version, and then you got to hear it here, yeah, whenever we, we were recording. We were recording, and uh, I had got the email through as we were doing the episode. So, as soon as I, I was bossing to hear it, like, and as soon as we finished the episode, you were still sitting here, and I was like, going. These are going to get my music shelf down your throat here for oh, me. Nice. So, so hot. You can do that this, anytime. So, that on. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, yeah, you, like, um, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, that's us done. No, it's good. It's good. You think Sean, being our producer, um, would keep his phone off? But no, too busy on um, OnlyFans or whatever it is. Rotten. Yeah. Um, well, but yes, yeah, so we we heard that first. You were shoving it down our throats. It was brilliant that, mm-hmm. and uh, so we were the first. We were the first to hear that first that final version. Now I think maybe the the rest of the band maybe had heard it as we were recording. Yeah, um, of but, course. But you heard it at the same time as, you. as me for the first time because people were saying like before the band, and I was like, well, yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> we're sort of, yeah, basically we we they were, were all probably all on yeah. top. Eh? But no, it was uh, it was such a treat honestly we loved it the out of office environment is already a very cool environment yeah. um the people that run it are are like so switched on so like it's a really cool thing to be happening in belfast the fact that there's the brewery there as well but i really get what you're saying about the the, the so far idea of setting it up as 
the artistry rather than sort of like live, just sort of generic live music or like a band. It's like you're actually there to sit and appreciate the artistry of the music, the individual instruments, the sound. We did a panel in there a few months ago. And one of the things that actually we were nearly, nearly like saying, I don't think this is comfortable because for exactly that reason, that people were all sort of talking and getting on to it for a night out, like yeah. understandably. But then I was like, hang on a second. I don't really want to sit on a panel and have to be like, excuse me, excuse me. No, uh, I don't as think we happened, had to. What was her no, name? No, we didn't the, have to. The brewer. I, I, oh, I, I should have checked that actually. She's I can't a sweetie. remember. I want to say Jane, but I'm possibly wrong. But their uh, brewer, who was also on the panel with us, who's a really cool person, mm. a total master, been able Fierce. to just be like, right, everybody, fuck up, we're talking now. And yeah. then everybody just went quiet and down and sat. Yeah. Yeah. And it totally changed the environment. But I'd never thought about it in that way, as if you were a musician and you were trying to also do that. Like we've experienced that with drag recently as well, where a performer was. It was Portia was a masterclass. She's amazing in drag. But at the gig that we were at, like because it was like a Christmassy sort of time, there was music playing. People were up trying to get up and dance while they were trying to do their number that they were paid there to do. It was and terrible. it was just like, now they styled it out and they're masterful. But it just, like, I hadn't kind of thought about it in that way as a performer yeah. uh, to be able to actually have to almost compete with the people who are there paying in and the complexity of that. Mm -hmm. To really get how that so far sounds, like with that curated environment is actually so important. But you guys nailed it. It was gorgeous. I think they were all really based. Beautiful. They were really like, because we, you're performing and you're doing your, um, I, I just, I, I've never seen you perform before. before. I've seen videos, um, but the, you're just, you're really in the moment. The hair is the mo is the thing. Yeah. The thing that we previously talked about with the flick. Yeah. It's the hairdresser and me. It's the reason why I keep on talking about it. <laughs> no, I, but it's so, it's really rock and roll. Like but, but We need to have this conversation because I don't know what to do with my hair. <laughs> I love it. Right. And shout out to Dave Elliott because I heard Sly Guy podcast the other day. He was on with William and uh, he shouted the hair out. He was like, I was hanging out with Sean earlier there. He says, his hair is immaculate and, oh, I, and I'm, not go, I'm not going to add to that but like I was very happy of the shout out for the hair but I also like I'm unsure about the do of the hair uh, so can I tell you what I think yeah. I was thinking about it last night um, so I was watching it I, I kind of I'll be in a queue we're obsessed with you we I'll, really are I'll be in a queue in a post office <laughs> and be thinking about what I love you too darling but thinking about what um, I would do to someone's whatever colour who's in front of me you know it's mm -hmm. just like a, it's always in a natural setting and I was sitting watching you and thinking wow that Paradise song is so fucking good uh, your other songs are great, great as well but that, that new tune is so good there was a real moment there was a real mm -hmm. vibe in the room and uh, I kind of go into this we did we even just with, well, really with Constantly any friends in production mode yeah but we're like uh, I love what they do there yeah how can we help how um, how do you make that work how do you get that out to somewhere what's another platform that you could um, put that on um, sort of like a like your your momager and yeah. um, I was thinking about your hair queer I, eye I don't think it's queer eye yeah <laughs> I, I actually don't think I would change very much but yeah. I would if you were it depends where you sort of want to go. But if you were, because it felt very sort of like Berlin or very sort of London there last night. Yeah, like there's something about that room. It's the intention of that, the, the way that it's put together. Culture. But it really felt, it felt like that. Yeah. It felt like uh, culture apart from the fucking 12th or uh, whatever else we do. <laughs> but um, it, uh, it, if you were in that space and you had your hair, I think it would be, and it would look mad, but I think just to take the, the, just the tips off it all mm -hmm. and really sharpen it, but to go, to go like page boy, like to just ch see that little yeah. back bit, just to chop that back bit out. See, I've always thought this should maybe be more tapered into the neck, but it never sits like that. You know. There is, there's something about the sort of the, the, the weight of the back that's actually, it's, it's part of it. It's sort mm -hmm. of, because it's all, it's one, it's one kind of living thing rather than yeah. like a couple of parts of a haircut and looking a wee bit kind of like you're, like you're trying to be on trend. It's, um it's much more kind of rock and roll the way that it is. But yeah, if I was to do anything, I would chop the ends off, really like square it out, but you would look. Lean and, into the page boy. I think in, in your mm -hmm. comedy world. Everyone would call That's you the like, yeah. you know, You would look like it, it, I had it uh, like that about six months ago. Yeah. Um, by accident, where like I went, I just went into Turkish barbers, and he just like gave me a complete bowl cut. Wow. But I sort of I I, 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 I loved it a wee bit. Yeah. But at the minute I um saw somebody else, were like, "What in God's name is that?" No. Oh. And well, I was like, "No." I suppose the thing, uh, the, one of the biggest things in your life at the minute that is imminent is the fact that you're going to become a daddy, a daddy in, yes. a, in April. 
in April. Yeah. Yeah. And, and all going well. Yeah. And there's a, I suppose there's a practicality to that in that you have to think about like, uh, even you're going to be like this <laughs> for several yeah. months. Do you so, know what I mean? Need to be you're not going to have time to go out. You're not going to have time to uh, style or trim or anything. So probably like go for the go for the the, the fierce whenever because you would think that because Connor does my hair, we'd be really really on top of it. But you can see my fringe go from like really really short to eventually it gets down here because we never get the time to do it, even whenever we're doing it in the house. But you're going to be a hundred percent on. Uh, I was going to say daddy issues there, but like daddy... That's what it is, uh, yeah. Daddy uh, work. <laughs> we've, got, we've got daddy issues and you, you're just actually a daddy. daddy. A daddy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited to be a daddy. You should be. I, I really can't wait. I feel very blessed that we've, we've got this chance mm-hmm. now and we've, yeah. we've wanted it for a long time so mm-hmm. was that is that is that the story so you use you, that was your it was your intention your yes. baby hasn't just uh, uh, that's, that's, that's like the official uh thing from from hq Dude. Oh, good. Uh, okay, the party. <laughs> that's the party lane yeah. uh, <laughs> hello sean's mama <laughs> no honestly like um and people keep going oh were you sweet until the the way not, and it's not like a religious thing or anything like that. Yeah. It's just like it's a financial thing to be yeah. honest yeah. with you. In terms of like, you know, um, I don't think uh, like this whole thing of like checking the boxes, like in terms of uh, house, marriage, yeah, kids, is necessary. Yeah, for anyone, but it's like just personally for me and Nicola, it's what we wanted. Yeah, yeah. um, and. Uh, that was just the the priority of things. It was like, okay, let's get a house. Uh, mm-hmm. Like and like me and the cold don't have an awful lot of money, you know. So yeah. like, took us an awful long time to save up and get our own house. Took us an awful long time to afford a, a wedding, mm-hmm. um, which we didn't go into any debt or anything stupid like that for. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like which, that's so common. Uh, big time. I I yeah. hate hearing stories like that because it, it really upsets me when I hear people going like, "Oh, we're getting married next year." I'm just going to take this money out just to do it. We're going to have this big wedding mm-hmm. up in the Galgorm or something. And you're like, yeah. and you're like, then the rest of your time, you're going to be paying off that wedding in ten years' time. Yeah. Going like, was that all worth it for a day? Yeah. yeah. Totally. Whereas like, I that's what I said this in the call the other day. Like, uh, we don't have to look back at it and wonder is there any like regrets in terms of mm-hmm. there's not going to be a remainder of like what it was all that we have is remainder of it is photos and videos yeah, yeah. like there's no financial thing to look back on yeah. it's, there, might, there might be like a bit of your a bit of what you do in terms of uh, not that it was not that it's just an event it was your wedding and it's special and all the rest of it but um, I've worked in that sort of uh, region um, in parts and it, it is essentially a, business. A, yes mm-hmm. and it is essentially a big um a big event and you from with your events background in t- terms of production and being part mm. of events and all the rest of it you maybe can a, a little bit more methodically piece something together mm. where you can look and say what are the key parts that we that we have to do mm-hmm. and what are the bits as well Well, you go to someone's wedding where they've spent a fucking bomb and maybe they've got it or maybe they've lent it mm. um, but you think was d- like do we need all of that yeah. stuff? Are, yeah. are your clearly mm-hmm. tenor favours or £20 favours times that by like your small well, wedding of 150 guests? Is, did, did that really make an uh, impact? Did that add? Yeah, did it add or is, but, is it not really about that, you know? But it's also like, you know, whenever, like I'm married and divorced obviously and uh, I was so shocked to see that like services, things that you would just buy uh, for day to day, you know, life, and not necessarily hair, but like you know, if you were uh, whatever, whatever it was, whenever you change the setting to wedding, the price just immediately doubles. Oh yeah, that's like, crazy. You know, easy. And it's not because what you're doing is any different. It's just because people are aware that people have wedding budgets, you yeah. know. And uh, I, I just think like it, there's so much of like the commercial side of things that is kind of coring out the heart of what should be a really beautiful and gorgeous mm. occasion. Yeah. The best day ever that people can have is one where it's really like focused on the people that are there, where actually the most important thing is the conversations that are being had, the dancing, the crack, the whatever. Yeah. And everything else is kind of superfluous. You know, it's really it's marketing, it, you it, know, and keeping up with the Joneses. There is so much of exploitation you know in terms of like what people can charge because a lay person going into something like that doesn't know what things are worth yes um but there is a side of it from my side of work and weddings too it's like i know that we have to add on extra because yeah. 
there is more pressure. Like, like if I, um, if I mess up a booking or something, you know, like on yeah. Saturday night for the Dirty Onion, you know, like I can get a replacement, and it's like it's not a big deal, you know, like yeah. I still yeah. play there in the next week. If I mess up somebody's wedding, that's yeah. like big time. So it's like you have to really focus in on that. You have to make sure like you're there, like all day and like and yeah right on demand to, to fit their plans you can't like mm -hmm. plan anything else that day yeah that's your main focus you're maybe like rehearsing for it like you know extra mm -hmm. because yeah. you're like this is important this is somebody's yeah. wedding and you have to dress yourself up for it yeah. yeah you know what i mean i'm not wearing like a free piece suit to play the dirty onion but yeah. i'm wearing it to go to someone's wedding yeah. so there is more yeah. involved in it so there is extra cost yeah i've never but, thought about it like that you know mm -hmm. like even even in terms of doing hair um or whatever else for in, in that kind of a um space it's uh you're you're I suppose you're not working with professionals mm -hmm. so there is sort of like a there's more of a messiness messiness to it you're not just going you're doing your gig and you're leaving yeah it's not like a fashion or, show yeah or yes. you're going yeah. and you're doing backstage to the show you've got yeah. a brief uh, you just do it. You don't. Uh, there's nothing else to it, and then it just it, it's it's done. Yeah. You you also just you know won the brief, but you know how to sort of meet that objective. Whenever you sort of put uh, all of the emotions that come around mm -hmm. weddings uh, into it, and then you have to experience uh, the wedding morning. Yeah. Sometimes that's beautiful, and it's so lovely to be part of someone's special day. You really believe it, mm -hmm. and a lot of me doesn't really believe it. But if people are really on board and it's really their thing, then uh, it can be really beautiful. But it can also be an absolute nightmare mm -hmm. because it's, you're when you go and play, you're not you're not just working with a promoter. That's like I know what you do. You just do it and you leave. Yeah. It's um, it's about that sort of it's about that special yeah. moment you do. You have to put the work I, in. I think it's really important that people are paid for their time and their skills and their talent in a way that is. A appropriate yeah. that they can pay their bills and do the things i suppose there's more like it's all the other bits and shits that go with it it's like even yeah. things like you know like a bridesmaid's dress it'll be the same dress that's exactly the same fabric that somebody would wear to calling it a formal you know and it's yeah. at a formal it's that that price but the minute that that same dress is sold into uh, yeah. a shop that sells those particular type of dresses do you yeah. know what i mean and it, it's like it's vendors um preying on the fact that it's like, oh, it's your special day. Yeah. You know, you do, want everything do to be not perfect. want that for your it's special day. It's worth it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or you know? they're worth it. Maybe like, your partner I is. Or... I don't know. I'm not sure that we need an outdoor ice cream van outside <laughs> and a roulette table in the yeah. reception. I don't even yeah. gamble. Why do I need a roulette yeah. table there, Nicole? But somebody because, else had one. Because Jimmy had you know? one. <laughs> and it was really fun. Yeah. I've seen on Instagram. <laughs> uh, or like, I'm the one pushing for it. And she's like, do you know how to play roulette? No. But, no, but, but I'm like, like, do you not want it to be special? <laughs> <laughs> well, here uh, we uh, re it was. We were really glad to see Nicole last night because Connor's just met her for the first time yeah. yesterday. Even though the lore of Nicole has carried from you, and then I got to meet her at Christmas time. Connor was uh, trying to sort out our house on our last day of the shop, mm -hmm. and you two called in and got some Christmas presents for people and stuff. So yeah. I got to meet her, and Connor was friggin' raging. I was like, actually so raging. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Often people call into the shop, and I'm like, whoops, swerved. Yeah. yeah. Um, but on the on the flip side of that, like especially around Christmas. It's lovely when people call in that you know, and it's mm. your space, and but you hadn't seen it before. I love to be there for those moments, but it was mm. it was a pleasure to meet her last night. We've heard so much about it. We've talked about her on this fucking podcast. Yeah. Yeah. We send our love to her every and week. I never yeah. Shut up about her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you are. You're so sweet. But it's also nice to catch someone and say, um, uh, and I know she knows this, but I, um, I think I, I think I told her I want to make you my husband. <laughs> And yeah. that I, I we, um, we said we'd be the groupies in the end. But for yeah. the reason being, the reason being, uh, how you speak about her behind her back yeah. is so, yeah. it's really beautiful. Yeah. It's like we'll walk down that corridor and be like, isn't it, isn't it, isn't it, isn't it so sweet that? You know, you really, it's the kind of thing that you would hope your partner is saying, you know, and yeah. the, the type of thing that they're, they're choosing to share. Like, it's, um, and it's. You're doing me so much favours here. I know, we're, <laughs> <laughs> there'll be another baby on the way <laughs> but um, even just hearing like some of your stories like you guys going out to Las Vegas for your um, for your honeymoon uh -huh. getting to hear that and sort of how that went uh -huh. um, and that kind of way of being when you're sort of out and about um, is it's beautiful and it's really it's nice to sort yeah. of uh, 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 attach uh, uh, as a face and a, per a person to those stories. Yeah, like I read a thing recently and it said you want to be in, you know, whether it's a relationship or a friendship, you want to be friends with people that like speak well about you or that hold your corner whenever you're, you're being talked about in rooms that you're not in. 
Do you know what yeah. I mean? And it's kind of that. It's yeah. like, you know, there's a there's a lot of things around. Um, it's trust. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like one of the tenets of trust that you know that like people kind of have your back, you know, but like, oh my God, you two are just like are. It's like definitely a couple goals thing. You two, you're so perfectly okay. matched. Okay, I love Nicole like so much. And it's just, it's like, um, I describe it, going home is like having a sleepover with your mates when you're a teenager. Yeah. Yes. You know, it, it's got that yes. like vibe. Like, and that's what I really love about what we have. Mm-hmm. Um, There's a safety in that as well. Yeah. yeah. And it, it is just, it's, um, it's consistency and just, it, it's just something that doesn't play on your mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's, yes. see like, um, see having that and that peace of mind of just someone's always there for you. Like, Mm-hmm. It, it it just clears that part of your mind yeah. to be able to go and reach like other parts of you like yeah. to reach the full potential of other yeah. aspects of your life mm-hmm. because you've got one thing locked in yeah you know, and, and somebody that champions you so hard as well you know, like we were too. talking last night about um because what you what you do and like what we're um is obviously as our you're not you're not just or we met you as a producer of brona's word up podcast but you produce loads of podcasts you know that's like your business you know your trade and obviously you have the band as well which is another element to that but the band is a group. But what you do in terms of your producing podcasts, and you're doing loads of them now, and we'll have to get you to list them. But uh, that's quite a lonely thing to do whenever it's all on your shoulders. You know, to have like, uh, you know, like a sole trader business is bloody hard. Like we know we're so grateful for the fact that there's two of us and that, you know, and it's like sitting having an idea at 10 o'clock at night and going like, is that a good idea or is it a shit idea? And sometimes the best ideas, yeah. that's what your work, you know, it's, it's what, that's where risk is. But the fact that you have such, uh, you know, she supports and champions you so much in what you're doing because you've done that for her in the past as well, you know, and she yeah. w- doesn't let the, the conversation go by without saying how, well, I wanted to go and do this and I wanted to go and do this. So, but Sean supported me in that. And now whenever he wanted to go and do, you know, launch his own business, do really go full time into this. Then I thought, right, well, I'll support you then, you know, in it. So you have that like amazing understanding sounding board of somebody who can say, go for it or hmm, maybe give that one a wee bit more thought or whatever. Yeah. You know, it's like you, you, it's very hard to do anything fully on your own. But the yeah. fact that you have that support system in her is just unreal. Like, I, I, I'm fully aware how lucky I am in terms of like, uh, like even going for the podcast thing, you know, yeah. like, um, we have a mortgage to pay for. We've just like had to pay for a wedding, and there's a baby on the way. And yeah. for her to go, like, go for it, you know, is mm-hmm. like, it's fucking risky, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but like, but to have that belief in me, I, I'm so lucky to have that. And in the same sense, like, um, like she wants to, um, like really focus down on like being a counselor, and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so like, uh. She has to. She had to step away from like a job that was like taking her away from that a wee bit, yeah. and mm-hmm. and also like is you know taking less hours to be able to do more volunteering and like mm-hmm. like I'm like go for it because that's what you want to do. We we'll have mm-hmm. to have like that has to go both ways mm-hmm. for both of us, and um and we really do. We we'll have her back, mm-hmm. like like that. Um, last night, uh, <laughs> if I had to have more time, like, uh. I was expecting to talk more about like the songs, mm-hmm. yeah, and, and like go into like the story of some of the songs. Uh, but I didn't want to bore the head of everybody, and also I wanted to get the chance to play to those songs. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't want to sit there like towards the end and go off oh, with no time mm-hmm. play totally. this last one. Um, there's a bit of performance in that too, where you you there's a, a an optimal amount of talking, yes. yeah, to do. Um, you could have talked more. Yeah, totally. You, you're really I good on the mic. Listened to you all day. You really had the crowd going. You were making people laugh. Like, mm-hmm. uh, and the moment where you, uh, you there was there was a, a word that you couldn't remember, and Nicole was just like <laughs> fired it out so to you. <laughs> it was just like it was it was lovely. I, I did to prepare say. one bit. Yeah, and it was that whole nickname story. Yeah, um, you have to do that's professional. You um, know. Yeah, that's it. Like, I I, I hate um, I hate going and seeing bands where like the singer turns around to the drummer and says. What are we playing next? 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I can't, can't have that. Like, yeah. Um, but it's almost sometimes people are like too cool for school. It's, it's like, like, oh, what are we playing? Yeah. yeah. Whatever. I can't just remember. bang this out for you. Whatever. <laughs> Whereas it's like, really the signal, the, the signal that I respond to is we've got our shit together. Even mm-hmm. if it's sort of if your thing is sort of messy, not that your thing is messiness, but even if your thing was sort of creative, mad messiness, mm-hmm. you still want to know that um, someone's going to be there on time. They're going to do their job. You're going to get what you need from them. That. Um, that, uh, that that there's more than just getting up on stage and sort of just fucking something out there. Mm. It's a real skill to entertain and sort of put um, put mm. that together. I, I say that, but I I did have that wee thing as well, like where I had a plant out in the, the audience. Who was your ah. plant? Was it Nicole? No, there was, uh, I went and spoke, uh, Chris went and spoke to some of the uh, like people who first came in and gave them a wee sticker, but he put the name of a song on the back of it oh, and a number. Oh, yes. yes. And... I did pretend to be like, oh, what's the next song we're playing? And I says like, has anybody got number four out there? You know, like, so. Right, I, yeah. No, you're writing that. I could see what was happening in that moment and I lived for it. I lived that that person was someone that you probably knew and that it was, that, that it's performance, you know? I didn't clock it in any way, shape or form. I loved it. <laughs> Just because I, I was like, it, it's, it gets you talking to people beforehand. It yeah. already gives you a connection to them. So they're going like, oh, when them ones come on. Because I didn't know who was there for us. I didn't know who was there for the support bands. And I didn't know who was there just for so far. Uh-huh. You know, yeah. like, so every opportunity to talk to someone and every opportunity to like, to show off to people or like, or show what we can do and perform in front of them is an opportunity to get an extra follower on Instagram to get someone else to go and add your song to your playlist on Spotify. Yeah. yeah. And you have to look at it that way. So, yeah. um, I love talking to people, like when they turn up to the the gigs, and then involving them as well. Yeah, is very important too. Yeah, because it's like so. a re- you're you're making like sort of virtual relationships then feel real. You know, you have a human face in what you do because you're like humans that are performing. But actually, whenever you can like attach like a one to one relationship, that you've got like supporters for life there as well. Yeah, yeah. and like search party, considering that you are. 26? 27. 27. Oh, 27. Yes, yes, of course. 27. Like, that's... uh, Your band has been going for 10 years? 10 years, yeah. That's You've been going mad. to search party for 10 years? Yeah. That's oh. mad. Yeah, that is a long, long legacy. Like, that is so cool. I love um, the name. Yeah. It's, it's been me, <coughs> uh, me, D and Rand mm-hmm. for 10 years. Um, and we've had various guitarists. And then Chris came in on keys. About a year and a half ago, mm-hmm. um, but feel like a really good unit at the minute. I've got so much connection with them mm-hmm. lads, um, mm-hmm. and I, I, they're they're just like they're my best mates as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, it's very important to have that. It's a, a very diplomatic space mm-hmm. too. Like when we practice, um, like it's like the house of lords. With, like in terms of like the arguing, but very constructive arguing yeah. in yeah. terms of like Respectful. you know like about aspects of a performance or like what should be out of this song but I love that it's like that yeah. that's creativity that, as well yeah that's yeah. the only way it's very collaborative and um, I think that sort of comes from when, when I started the band I was only doing vocals and, and playing guitar because we were waiting on getting a better singer or like you what? know what I, I didn't really sit I I'd done a wee bit of singing in school, but like it was. So you sort of fell myself. into it. Yeah, really? great. But we just, That's so surprising. We to didn't me. find a singer, so I just kept singing. And, um, but because of that, I was also sort of in other bands before that. I was like in the background, so uh-huh. I didn't feel like I was a leader, sort of, or like front man sort of thing. So when we were writing songs, we were writing them all together, and uh-huh. um. And that's what it worked. And I think that's why we're together so long because yeah. like D doesn't feel like he's just a drummer and yeah. for yeah. Search Party, he's like, yeah. Search Party's his band. Yeah. Yes. Search, pa- Search Party is all of our bands, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, so it it doesn't mean that you turn up and you, you play the gig, you do the practice and you go home and, yeah. and forget about it. It's like each of us are either like making TikToks or... Yeah. Um, yes. or like more like a creative collective. Yes. Yeah. It, it, it's a proper group um, and you feel ownership of it. Mm-hmm. And and you can put your name on it and say like, I put that idea forward. Yeah. I wrote mm-hmm. that lyric. Um, You know, 
I, it was my decision to put this gig. Chris was the one who orchestrated like that gig last night and mm-hmm. got in touch with so far and made all those connections. Is it Chris on the keys? Yeah, he's so talented. He yeah. he is insanely talented. Yeah. He he's the the baby of the group. He, Chris is twenty three. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, and I knew Chris from U Faction. You know, he was like interning there while I was working there. Mm-hmm. Wow. And, um. Right. He's got a great voice as well. You two, your voices Gorgeous. harmonize so beautifully yeah. together. Like it's, I suppose, I, like I, I love the fact that I, I love. I sort of imagine, and like I've seen sort of videos of you rehearsing and stuff like that. And obviously, we it all happens within your studio. Uh, where we're your are groupies, here so we know where we're thinking about you. Yeah, so we like obviously lightly stalk you. Is, Actually, it, is it weird when you see the videos and, you and can then we see, see the ourselves in the background? The background. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen a couple. Because literally yeah. at night, it's it's like night at the museum and here yeah. this studio come to life. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we like, we just set up all our bands off around the sets and I'm practicing here. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, it, it's multifunctional. It, it's lovely though that like we were, I think we were talking about this either last night or this morning as well. Though the fact that like, and maybe it was with Nicole now that I think about it, but the fact that like you're, uh, what you do in terms of like event production, the fact that you have a band and the fact that you produce all of these podcasts, there's a really natural fit between all of the three things. Like there's really like transferable skills, transferable kit. You know, trans- yeah. so many of the things. You know, There's like ca- a real that camera was our last night. And- I spotted yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, it's like a really satisfying like uh, efficiency. You know that the three things all sort of nicely, and the skills and the kit and all the rest of it all fit into each other. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned there as well, like one of the th- like, and for us, like in the world of like the podcasting that uh, you do uh, and that what you produce, like. For us, we've said this before in the podcast, I'm sure. Maybe we haven't, actually. Maybe it's just something we've talked about. But, like, for us, um, whenever we went on to Brona's podcast, we, you know, we're, we're as as the queer people that we are, we're often kind of a bit nervous around interacting with uh, straight men. Sorry, it's 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 the contract. <laughs> yeah, the contractual mention. Word up exists, and it's reasonably good. <laughs> okay. But, uh, you know, for us, actually, you know, the interacting with like, uh, you know, a, a, like a straight man can often be like a bit sort of daunting to queer people. Yeah. And like, I think the first time that we met you, like straight away, you always put people at ease anyway. So that was always like, that was like a really positive point for us. But then the next thing you're like, we, we, we you made a drag race, a very specific drag race joke that was based on a reference that was like about seven seasons back and it was very sort of niche and you made a, a drag race reference. And I remember like after the episode being like, do you watch Drag Race? And you're like, uh huh. Like, but also like, it, it, it takes you to the, yeah. it, it takes you to the space of like, so you're a partner. They so they're a man then. Yeah. We're like, so you you gotta be a gay. Yeah. You know, like you got you're deep mm. in it. Yeah. And uh, like, no, I actually really married with yeah. a baby on the way. It was like, oh It's like the it's the best sport in the world, let's be yeah. real. You yeah. know. And yeah. one of your one of your songs is written after Yes, the I wanna hear this. Icon that, that is, is Valentina. Valentina. So it's called it's Echo Park. Yes. Um and it came from the the first day I've had Echo Park. How long has it been from season nine? Like good, a lot of years now. Years. Yeah. Like, like six fa- years, five years. Five, six yeah. years. And so that's how long Echo Park was. Like I started writing that. And it was because when Valentina would do her confessionals, it would say Valentina Echo Park. You know, you Really? Say. Yeah, because that's the, the suburb of... LA that she's from. Oh. I did not get I, I was like, we are like really obsessive about drag race too. I, and I did not I couldn't get what the reference is. I was like, there's something floating in the back of my brain, but like, what is that connection? Yeah. Oh, I get it. So Valentine is from Echo Park and I just thought that like I had this whole American dream like vision in my head of what Echo Park is. Yeah. And it's, it's not a taxi, like God love it. It's it's a very like uh poor neighborhood and uh-huh. like oh. a lot of like migrant communities and stuff there yes. and she's Mexican. very depraved um uh but in my head echo park was this really cool like like gorlitzer in berlin or something like that yeah or... just like very cultural like uh-huh. all these like cool people in it and like um i had this fantasy thing of what echo park looked like and so that just that name just stuck in me for a long time and i just kept thinking echo park that'd be melody and then love. I, I fell in love with the story of Valentina um, and I read like a lot of like Greek mythology and stuff at the time and see the tragedy of like 
of really attaching like yourself to and being such a fan favorite go off fan favorite but like <laughs> yes! but, uh, <laughs> fan favorite <laughs> But she's our awesome. fan favorite. Sorry. But she was like my favorite. Like, and I just thought very, very talented queen. Yeah, um, big time. Really loved her story, and uh, and then just the the irony of like of confidence and, and cockiness being her downfall in the end. Um, yeah, f- felt like a great tragedy to me. Even though yeah. that was the character that she was playing. Yes, you know, it was so deliberate, and it was so like uh, uh, it's kind of. But you can see how people that don't get that that is what that is, like, mm-hmm. that could be annoyed by that. You know, yeah. I actually think that sometimes I, that's one of the things that probably makes people think that we are the biggest dickheads going. But, like, we are playing characters at the same time yeah. to an extent. We are who we are and we're we're consistent and all the rest of it. I think but the we story play is we into, all are. Yeah, you know? exactly. Mm-hmm. But we play into the cheese. We play into the, you know, whatever that is. Well, look at this. But, yeah, exactly. It's like being you know. extra and all the rest of it. But it's it's kind of it's it's like our job. It's what people want, and it's what is going to keep you know the money coming in. That's going to keep uh, our work happening. And yeah. you know what I yeah. mean. It's like it's playing the game. And Valentina is an excellent game player. Game player. Yeah. Like you don't think that Valentina designed the idea of. Sorry for anybody that doesn't watch Drag Race, but we're going. We're getting into it. Been five but years. Like, yeah, <laughs> get yeah. it. Get into it. This is like the 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 slowest. Um, sort of the 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 coolest take six years later. Yeah. On um, <laughs> yeah, on a character. It's only taken us to get to whatever it is, episode like fourteen or yeah. something like that, to finally get into yeah. really getting under the skin of Drag Race. Yeah. But you don't like it's like it's such a given that like there was no way that Valentina forgot to put her makeup on underneath the yeah the mask. Oh. That was designed. Do you know what I mean? That was it to I create like to an episode. Epi- yeah, I'd like to keep it on, please. <gasps> you know, we all have that no. line, and it's yeah. like we also know that production spotted that she didn't do that and it was by design and then mm-hmm. that went to RuPaul because otherwise there's loads of people that have lip synced before with stuff covering their faces and all the rest of it but that was a choreographed moment so you know a produced for, moment for anyone that's listening or watching um, you, uh, and, and have never seen Drag Race what the hell I don't think there's a crossover here with people who haven't seen dra- Drag Race and people who listen to your podcast yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think it's like they're a like diagram, yeah. it's just two circles on top of yeah, each other. It's just one yeah, big circle. They're not. Yeah. There's maybe a tiny <laughs> slither of someone who hasn't. Yeah. So the story is Valentine so Drag Race <laughs> is a competition where drag queens uh, compete much like America's uh, next top model to be uh, to to win and they win a big prize and all the rest of it. It's based in the, uh, in the states and it's uh, broadcast all over the world. They do lots of stuff uh, all, all over the world as well. But Valentina who uh, was a Mexican um she's originally from Mexico. She, yeah. she she did it at, like physically emigrate, um. So she um she is a, a Mexican queen, really super talented, very very beautiful. Why is my brain doing a funny uh, route on the on the country there? I want is it's it definitely just Mexican? That, no, but is it that um is the reason my brain doing that because she's really really massive in like Venezuela or something like yeah, that she's as apparently well? A ginormous is the reason why I'm sort of leaning into that culture. Um, is very profitable. Look at people like some of the top selling artists in the world, like Shakira. Shakira. Mm-hmm. Um, when you actually look at who has sold and made the most money in music, it's people who can who have the duality oh, of yeah. language. Like so, Bad Bunny, like technically yes. the biggest artist in the world at the moment. Yes, ah. or there's loads of people like that. Celine Dion, for example, yeah. sings in French. Uh, anyways, so <laughs> Valentina. <laughs> Valentina, it's not exclusively queer artists. Um, all the icons. But no, uh, so Valentina was on this show and she was doing really well. She was very fresh in the drag, but like she's just a star. Excellent. The star, her star part could have taken her right to the end. But there was an episode where she wore this bullfighting inspired look and mm-hmm. she covered her face with a mask, which was very, very beautiful. This sort of. Sort of did. P- Conquistador, like. Yes. yes. Or, like, or Matador, is it? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <coughs> this Matador, like, yes. sort of side fit. Night. Yeah. Um, so then Gorgeous. she was put into the top. The, she was put into the bottom two. And what happens on the show if you put into the bottom two is that you have to lip sync for your life. So you have to perform, and a, a big part of that is lip syncing and actually moving your mouth. And whenever mm-hmm. she was put into the bottom two, because obviously she was wearing the mask and um, and all the rest of it, she uh, refused the. T- she tried to do the lip sync with the mask still on, and there's a very iconic moment of RuPaul um, asking her to remove the mask. Says, and she, stop the music. Stop the music, stop yeah. the music. Tells her to take off. What she, RuPaul says, what part of lip sync do you not understand? And Valentina replies, 
uh, or, or uh, RuPaul asks her to take the mask off and Valentina replies, I would like keep to keep it, it on, on please. please. Which is just, <laughs> she eventually takes it off. She doesn't have makeup below. It was just. And she I, hadn't rehearsed the song. Yeah, clearly. She so, hadn't rehearsed. She didn't know the, she didn't she didn't know the know words the word. uh-huh. because she didn't think. She thought she'd yeah. keep the mask on. Yeah. It's, it is just <laughs> in this show, in this sort of legacy of um, the pro, uh, this program and everything that it sort of spawned, it is it's iconic. Yeah. yeah. You know. So, so this is where I was at with the song is like that. I thought that was like a crazy moment. I knew that it just it affected me. You know, like yeah. as a TV moment, um, and then. All Stars 4 came about not long after, right? Yes. And All Stars 4 had the moment um, where Valentina got to redeem herself. Whereas in All Stars, at that time, there was a switch where instead of the bottom two lip syncing to yeah. be put, they, they saved themselves. The winner of a lip sync in All Stars at this time would win. Yes. Yeah, and it was your lip sync for your legacy. Yes. So there was this fucking glorious TV moment where then... Valentina gets the lip sync, a song by the same artist where this tragic fucking thing I've happened. I've never the last made that game. connection. Yes. Yeah, it was an <gasps> Ariana Grande song, second <gasps> time, and danced like her life depended on it. Yeah. yeah. And won. And like. I'm getting goosebumps. And who was she danced against then? Do you remember? Oh, fuck. I can't remember. But the thing that I remember most about that is hearing. Moni Cart and I Mohart like yeah. in the background going yeah! yeah which was exactly the same noise I was making as yeah. I was watching yeah. it yeah. and um because it was everybody was aware of what that meant yeah you know and it was aware that she had already won mm-hmm. this um with the performance yeah and so that hit me that hard that I was like like I'm finishing this song but it was hard oh, to I write love that. because like um. It's like an indie pop song. And yeah. Again. It's a great song. We, we were yeah. like, um, still in the stage of like, we bit garage rock, we bit punk rock, you know? Yeah. So this like, high production, you know, indie thing was like a bit alien at the time. This is at like, the end of 2019, start of 2020. Mm-hmm. Then lockdown hit, and I started demoing stuff in the house. Had a lot more time in my hands. And, um, I got the sound right, for like the riff, and like, and we programmed drums and everything else. It was sounding right, but then it took Ryan to come up to my house yeah. one of the days in lockdown, and like, and he like helped me fill in the wee gaps with like the the lyrics. Yeah, and so it gives it it gives it that wee bit of ambiguity. Yeah, that yes. like it doesn't necessarily what say what the song's about, but the essence is that this person has so much potential, and you believe in them, and like, and just what makes them so unique and so amazing is actually yeah. what is their downfall. Yeah. And, um, but like, like just because they fail once doesn't mean they can't come back again. Yeah. And they can, yes. and so it's sort of a song about resistance, about, about like, about believing in people. And yeah. Um, and I love that song so much. Yeah. yeah. Like, Same. That's, uh, there's like a, a, like a part where you whistle at the beginning of it yeah. as well. Is that something, was, is, this is like, I, I, don't whistle ever really in the house, but I Give used to go. whistle all the time. Are you a whistler? Is it that? Yes, yeah. that's it. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Pitch perfect. <laughs> we'll we'll, we'll do the whistle. Yeah. You know. <laughs> can we can we like actually come on and be like the uh, percussionists? We'll, we'll come and like, give you like. We could be like, your bears. <laughs> is it bears? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, yeah, just um, the bag and dun, 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 we'll just do little, loads of drugs yeah, and occasionally little, little. whistle. Yeah. We'll do the tambourine, maybe. I, I'm only a sober whistler. We I do have, have extra tambourines. <laughs> yes. Well, <laughs> as we found out. What were you yeah. trying to say there? Sorry, I sort of. No, I no, I was just saying I can only whistle sober. Well, what? <laughs> I mean, what under myself. <laughs> and when it comes to the tambourines, that was a really nice moment as well. Um, where you'd brought them the extra tra- yeah. tambourines and you, this is risky biscuit yeah. stuff. You then give the tambourines to the audience so there's yeah. a couple that went out there for for was it meant to be for one song it was meant to be for one song but um i didn't anticipate the the production set of things where like once i gave them it two songs into the set <laughs> there's not a, an easy moment to like turn around and go so i can have a back place yeah, yeah. so yeah. obviously someone with i don't know whether they had drink in them or not but like someone was like Okay, so I've still got the tambourine. I'm just going to keep playing it. Yeah. And someone that doesn't, like, 
And tambourines are hard to play. It was yeah. slightly like, that, off. Let's not put down tambourine yeah. players. Yeah. Tambourines are difficult to play. Well, that's uh-huh. a skill. It yeah. Is. yeah. And um, so, God love it first. And they kept trying to go into the next song. And like, it was so <laughs> off. And yeah. it's so off for him because if we didn't even have a monitor last night. It was a small yeah. space. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I could, I was listening to the reflections of like the speaker, you know, for my own reference, like yeah. to hear like everybody else and stay in tame, stay in <laughs> tune with my voice. You could just hear And I just heard like the <laughs> odd rattle of a tambourine completely out of context. <laughs> yeah. I was going, oh, it was a bad mistake. But yeah. a funny one. I was just laughing. It yeah. was, in fairness, I think the crowd took it well because yeah. it was sort of a collective like, I think. Is this is this meant to continue? <laughs> you know, and it was it wasn't even like it was like um on a half beat or anything. It was like just ever so slightly off it. And sometimes it didn't and sometimes it didn't <laughs> happen. Yes. Yeah. It yeah. was like should it, oh shit. Yeah. yeah. I it's actually like, do you want me to do this? Am I meant to still be doing this? Or but like am I like the letting answer the was crowd probably the no. down, you know? Well I whenever you were giving out the tambourines, I was like, I won't I didn't say it, but yeah. in, uh, inside my soul I was <laughs> like, I won't <laughs> Um, Because I think it's good, especially when you're trying to interact with the crowd, it's good to say we're good for that interaction. Mm -hmm. Um, Uh uh, Number one, I didn't take one because I probably would have stolen the show, Sean. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you know, (laughs) on the tables, you know. Just get onto the stage, come on, move over you. (laughs) I also love, but uh, are you this person that when you go to a show that like someone says, always uh, interact with us and you're like, I'm in. Yeah. Always, yeah. always ends up on the stage. It's, it's before. It's, yeah. I think other performers uh, know the game, and they um, uh-huh. you can, there's a way to do that and and help people along. Yes. Like if we're ever at a drag show, we will be on the stage. Yeah. Because people know what the crack is. They know that we're going to give it life like that. Um, show. So it was Coco Bongo in um, uh, Balmoral Hotel. The Balmoral Hotel. is in all my words today, <laughs> um, but it does do most of my memory. Um, but you spoke about it before that uh, really very um, uh, uh, very difficult gig for Portia um, it was Who basically was masterful it was a room full of just um, people that maybe get out once a year people that like there was uh, one of the <laughs> biggest group, dues. yeah well, Christmas work dues one yeah. of the biggest groups was this group of girls from a daycare and they yeah. were you'd think they hadn't been out ever yeah like they were so fun they were having a gig they were having a gig yeah but God love them in that in that moment but um, it, it, for, for it to be a sort of a ropey enough gig for Portia God love them yeah. having to sort of hold that together they did a very very yeah, good job um, they did have audience interaction and in that moment there was there were there, there was actually a raffle so it was fair yeah but you could see when they're like number whatever it was I was like yeah and you could just see her going thank <laughs> fuck because <laughs> you can have uh, the crack yeah. back and forth you, know yeah. you know that you're going to play tennis you know that you're you're batting it yes, back and forward yeah. that you're not just stealing the ball yeah. although there was a woman I have to say this out loud I'm so glad I didn't get the opportunity to say it there was a woman that Porsche. So Porsche's whole thing is called Lady Porsche Dia Diamante. If you want to search, you can. She's we'll a star. Put a link to it in the description. Um, but um, she, her whole thing is that she's a North Down housewife and she yeah. plays it very well. Uh-huh. I think it's quite close to her character, actually. Yeah. You know, it's sort of it's, <laughs> it's Marcus. It's, yeah, it's quite close <laughs> to Marcus joke. himself. Love him. it's, it's actually it's like um, no one's seen Todd does that Mike McGoldrick character. Oh, yes, yes. It was meant to be like yes, like a posh uh, North Down person. So yeah. that. Like so how that. how real is this actually? How, it's yeah, that exactly. and then also Paddy Raff's what's he called oh, Nigel. Um, Nigel Nigel yeah um, and what, he has another character anyways so it's very that it's that sort of a feeling and it is quite close so it, it works well it's a good choice yeah. but she was going along and, it's, and sort of that way you know she was sort of playing this like I'm uncomfortable to be here space you know yeah. basically I'm posh and I just don't know what's going and on and Usens are all Westies and Usens are yeah. all Westies but I'm here, don't worry I'm here to educate you but they Love got that kind of way. Way. And they got to the end of the <laughs> line gag. of these all these women and they're like so what are you doing this Christmas and some people can do it so they're like oh I'm going to have so much fun I'm so excited uh, Christmas is amazing and then you move on to the next person mm-hmm. you're just giving something um, some people were um, were very good at that some others were just sort of given were a wee bit scared you yeah, know because they might be never on stage a wee bit shy and they're there with their mates and they might take the piss out of them river um, but the last girl at uh, Porsche said to her what are you doing this Christmas what's your what's your big plans for Christmas day and everyone else was like doing stuff with their kids and all and this woman just leaned in the mic- microphone and went riding <laughs> Good. And actually, you really. I, uh, she, looked, she looked very nervous on stage. Yeah. She didn't look like she sort of wanted yeah. to be there. And she was with a sort of, sort of maybe one of the most um, 
uh, it's, it's one of the sort of poshest tables. Yeah. You know, they all sort of looked a wee bit like they work in a, a solicitor's or something. Yeah. And uh, a little bit sort of awkward, but yet riding. Yeah. I just thought That's that funny. is so yeah, good. Right. Even Portia was just like like a real, an industry uh, professional was really just like, how do I reply? Like, yeah. what is the, what is that? Never speechless. But yeah, audience yeah. participation as far as that. You did, so you did the tickets and you did the songs being mm-hmm. called out. But then also the tambourines, which were actually really fun. The fact that you were like, we didn't know how many tambourines to bring. We just sort of brought them all. I, I, I live for that because like you're saying, it's about building connections. Mm-hmm. You know, it's about sort of yeah. making people feel like they're they're on board. And it's participation. Yeah. And you picked things like that up um, the more like you gig with people. Yeah. yeah. And I, I love, um, I love going to a gig and feeling like I want to be better. By yeah. watching yes. the yeah. people I drum with. Last night even, um, Jennifer that was on first, our songs were so heartfelt and very like exposed, perfect for that sentence. Yeah. She's like a yeah. so far like artist. Like I, yeah. that's what nights like that were for. Yeah. And um, then uh, Joseph McVeigh was on after us. It was like pop, but it was also like a wee bit country. But mm. it was like, like I, I didn't even know what, because uh, we were like, See to be honest, I'm there to be so supportive and like and loving the whole artist and all. But there is a wee bit of you going like, are we gonna do good here? You know, like yeah, yeah and like analyzing what else is happening and you're looking at everybody who else is go who's going up, and like in the sound checks and stuff. And uh, Chris was saying to me like, your man Joseph McVeigh like he's got like a lot of plays on Spotify, you know, big following, you know, like pretty big deal, you know, yeah. Um, I think he might like you know steal the show here a bit. And I was going, I don't know, Chris, because like we've, we have a band set up. Just good on the, you. The, the numbers, like and thing, with strength in numbers, and like the songs are good. Like I think it's all work in our favor. The energy will go up when we yeah. come on. Um, I think we'll be sweet. We won't be out of our depth for nothing. And uh, and then your man, Joe McVeigh, went up, and I went. I was just floored. I've heard his music before, but like watching him sing and play, I was like. Fuck, that is a professional, and yes. like, and and I like, I was just so in awe. I was like, yeah. fucking hell, I want the sound like that. I, I like mm. his guitarist, and so it was just him and another guitarist, and I just had a wee stomp box like for a drum beat, yeah, and like that they were kicking with their foot, and it was just fucking gorgeous, be- really beautiful sounding, and like very well done, very well rehearsed, um, and it just it makes you want to step your pussy up yeah that, you know and, and that's yeah. a good thing i think yeah. yeah you know it's not like it's not me going fuck i'm rude and he's better than me or there's, whatever. there's two ways to react to that it's that it's yeah. either fear or love and it's like wow i love so either i'm 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 frightened that i can never do that and i don't believe in myself maybe my uh what do they call it the uh sort of my imposter syndrome yes uh it's sort of taken hold here or you can say wow that's really amazing mm-hmm. um and really inspirational i want to uh uh, step your pussy up. You want it. Yeah. You want it. Yes. You want to take it to the yeah. next level. And, and I think I we played better then going out after because yeah. I was like, okay, Sean, fucking engage and yeah. like and give a performance here. Yeah, should we pep in your stuff? And, and that's that's where like those wee crowd interaction things come from too. Because I've seen other bands do that, or I've seen comedians do it, or, or yeah. drag performers. I've I've seen other like artists go out and and I'm just picking apart wee things that I like. Yes, um, I've seen like there's a band called Reese Ajaro check them out good friends of ours and they're masters of that you know mm-hmm. like um one of the most camp things uh that i saw them do and it was just fucking brilliant and so well performed it was just like they um instead of shouting all right guys i want just to clap along this part of the song they just like um had like a cardboard like a big cardboard sheet yes that they just held up and just went clap and yeah and, yes. and, and it was it was the timing of it it was just like right as the beat came out it was just like clap and then oh. and uh it was done so well i was like they know what the crack right. is yes. you know it, we things yeah. like that it's yeah. things like that that's experience because then you take yeah. those things and you put them in your little rolodex mm-hmm. of hate no but your little, <laughs> little rolodex of um creativity or yeah. inspiration and then you never know we, this happens just all the time yeah. we're in a meeting and someone will say you know we'd, we've got a i mean it's never a big budget but we've got this small budget we're going to do a thing we would love to sort of piece something together mm-hmm. what sort of thing would you do and we're like well you can do um this event this would work in this way you could do like mm-hmm. this this would work for this reason but then 
then it wouldn't work for this because we've seen it in this other way mm-hmm. where um, it didn't really piece together. Yeah. You'll get the if you're searching for the vibe and we're not here to make money, then we can do it in this location. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever it is, you that know. Just, that's just sort of building experience, you know, and evolving your art and your skill and your creativity at the same time. It's like you never, I, I just think whenever, uh, there, there's never a point where you're like, oh, that's me, I'm done. You know, I've, I've, uh-huh. I've got, you know, it's like, w- that's where kind of the joy in the craft comes from. You know, the fact that you're kind of constantly able to try new things. And also it's knowing that like, even if you do something, you're like, oh, I didn't really like that, didn't really work. But you've tried it and now you can move on to the next thing and try something else. You know, and it takes like sometimes the slog of like making those mistakes or thinking, um, or getting the positive boost from and, something that really has yeah, worked. And, and being just exposed keep trying. the yeah. more... I'm being vulnerable. Yeah. I could see you know? the I yes. could see the um I could see the comedy in it last night. Uh-huh. There was a feel it because the lightness. It, there's I um I really believe that there's energetic forces. Fuck, I really I, I can't believe I'm this person. <laughs> but I Bye-bye. really believe that we are surrounded by and that we emanate energetic forces that we do not explain. Or that we have not yet explained. Um, I don't know what it is. I don't claim to know. I'm not a crystal bitch. It's just, I, that's what I think. Because you, you can, um, animals feel it, for example, children feel it, and yeah. they don't know really what's going on. But um, the energy that you give, it, it, and it was just fleeting little sparks of it, was like stand-up. Yeah. And then I thought about all the time. It's funny because you're like sitting and talking and performing, and I'm like trying to, ana- and you do that, you're, you're saying you do the same thing I, with yeah, other people's gigs, yeah. but you're trying to analyze it all yeah. and work it out. And then I'm looking at the crowd, and I'm looking at how they sort of meet up. But yes. Watching you doing that, one of the things that I was sort of thinking about was the fact that there's crossover from you doing like your comedy gigs, for example, or doing the podcast with all your uh, like, comedians like, um, to then you on stage and you're going, actually, no, I can I can I can hold a crowd and I yeah. can yeah. Uh, I can say something and I can be funny. You know, yeah. like one of the like one of the, like for us, like our podcast, like isn't necessarily a comedy podcast, but I would like to think that like it is still funny. But um, we're now number the, 82 in the podcast charts in, in, in Estonia, Estonia. So yeah, we have well, dropped dramatically. Yeah, but dropped. it was a it was a comedy podcast yeah, listing. Yeah, we are. Li- it's sort of the, it's given us the comedy listing, um, and, which I think that's kind of fair. We put that in our hashtags and stuff as well. But one of the funniest things about our podcast is your work. You know, it's yeah. the edits that you put in. And like even saying about, you know, earlier on, I was saying about how for us as queer people, like how comfortable you make us, how much you get our culture. Like we we're saying, we've give you like an honorary queer card just for like <laughs> yeah. outstanding achievements in the field of um, allyship, you know, yeah. and like really understanding like, like, blue Peter the language. Badge. Like step your pussy up. I've never heard a straight person say that before. Yeah. And that gives me so much comfort. Like it really, really does. I've said pussy about five times in my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's actually a word that absolutely yeah. turns me. But yes, yeah. But even in the in the in the sphere of comedy, you know, like and you, uh, you will often like we've seen you step into like William Thompson into Mudblood, you know, to sit with William if Paddy's had to go uh-huh. off somewhere and like co-host and things like that as well. And we would very much think of like, whoops, I've just hit my microphone there. Uh, but whenever we talk about the podcast, it's very much like we consider like we're, yes, we're the ones that sit at the table here uh, and. That's why we're glad to have you on the table today. But like, you're very much like a part of the conversation and the vibe. And we, it's not just in terms of your humour and how you get our queer culture and things like that. And the bits that you splice in, those edits, I swear we have frightened our dog and cat so many times. The only things that make us laugh so hard at our own, our, no, our podcast, but your work within it, where you read us to filth and you put funny, is where it's people have mo- seen your face before is then spliced in in those edits. It's and the things. Mo heart reaction. Yeah. And it's it's a queer thing because often you do it in a, in a very um, hetero space and people are a wee bit frightened. Often if we're in a meeting, I'll do yeah. it and I'll be like, yeah. Because there's been a lovely idea, whatever, but you're sitting with the fucking executive or whatever, you yeah. know, like people who are really, they are suits yeah. and they will always be suits. They've always been suits and um, uh, they're not used to maybe expressing yourselves in that way. Yeah. But even just in, uh, noises that I made like, huh, yeah. you know, which is like a really good noise. Yeah. And people will often just like stop at a table and be like, you have to then translate it to be like. No, that's a good thing. That's good. Or even the fact that you'll sit in that moment and go like, if someone mm. says something, but you don't want to interrupt, I'll often do this. Yeah. <laughs> And Which then, is like, yeah, it's great. Yeah. But actually the people they're like, like no. Are you saying are you saying no? Stop. But it's that it's that Mo Heart reaction of just being like, Yes, like we'll sit in our house yeah. and watch something and just uh, and live for it. It's living yeah. for it, you yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? See I I've sort of not known where I stand within that space too, because mm. I don't want to seem like I'm intruding then on like a safe space for everyone. Like, but by, by just like gobbling up this 
like culture that should be owned by queer mm. people so like I, i'm very aware that like there is a fine line the the, the trade there too um and i so that's why i don't like the I, I don't like to be like oh yes like i get you because i watch drag race or i go i go to like yeah uh like like queer nightclubs or like i, I go to drag nights and, and stuff like that or mm. I, I love like fashion and all this here it's, yeah it, i don't I don't want to be really pushy with that. So, I d- do you think that's all we are? Is fashion and drag? Queen? <laughs> Get the fuck. Like, but the fact that you, can, <laughs> but, but the fact that you even consider that, like you don't, that the fact that you even consider that means that you're not. That's you know the what I mean? thing. Like, People, that's kind of the thing. You're not an arsehole if you if you can if you take time to consider if you are. You yeah. know, when people are like, oh, I don't know. Like, I'm really worried that it'd be perceived in this way. Yeah. That's the Our work. It's when people care. sort of just um, bust on through it. I, I recognize what you're saying, but. Yeah. Um, and it's noted and appreciated. It's noted and appreciated, but uh, no, you're you're so welcome. And so is anyone within that space, you know, just yeah. sort of interact with it, remove a little bit of that fear. Yes, there are people with it within every community that are exclusionary and reactionary, beca- yeah. especially communities um, uh, of um, anyone that's marginalized because uh, we're hurt. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that um, that just find it hard to sort of cross that border into others. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's 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 in crossing the border. That's why something like drag race is so important in it's the world. Educational. Yeah. Yes, it's not perfect, but far it, from it. It, yeah. it, it, yeah. it bridges the gap there. And um, I, I think for me, like I've just been lucky enough to have so many good um, queer mentors mm-hmm. to sort of steer me right in that. Yeah. Uh, conversation I have like fantastic friends and like and have managers and stuff in the past yeah. just like that have introduced me to this world and I feel so enriched for having it and that whole comedy set of things were like um say about me talking on stage and stuff a lot of that yeah. comes from that world I mean the other time make um on this show is basically the exact I watch an episode of like of the pit stop and it's like the exact same. Yes, like, yes. yes. Or, or uh huh. It, with it, Trixie and Katja, it's it's just stolen. Like to be yeah. honest, it's it's borrowed of pride. Forgery. Yeah, but um, <laughs> but it's uh, that same style of thing. So yeah. that that's where I get that from. It's not from sitting listening to the other comedians and stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah. obviously there is a bit of that that comes in. Um, but also that's public speaking and uh, being able to like match the energy of a room and yeah. like get yeah. people listen to you it comes from you for youth work too yes. yeah um, because you have to command respect when you're talking to a lot of yeah. the hardest audience in the world yes, <laughs> yes. Um, and you have to be able to relate to people you have to know what people are thinking in a moment like the first thing i done was when i like i was like i'm not gonna speak to begin with and that was fully intentional i was like going yeah um i was like this is deliberate i want to play the song first and then speak so i didn't say a word before it started yeah mm-hmm. Um, and then as soon as we finished that first song, I was like, right, everybody give yourselves a shake. Mm. Yeah, that was Because it was like, okay, I, like, I know what I'm doing here. Everybody can relax. Yeah. Yes. You know, sit yeah, back in your seat and enjoy the show. That's what you're yeah. saying as well. And that moment is just to say, uh, it's, it's, it's to let people know that they can relax, that you've mm-hmm. got it, you yeah. know, mm-hmm. and same, it's that same thing in any performance, mm-hmm. you know, in comedy or drag or whatever else it is. Mm-hmm. And, and just to, to take it back to that thing of, like, not wanting to push myself into... The community too much is like it's because i'm aware that there is people that take advantage of that yeah, exactly. of yeah. like of using queer culture or using any culture using um like black culture yeah. using yeah irish culture like to for fashion or for clout or profit mm-hmm. yeah. for profit mm-hmm. yeah. like time like True. queer washing and stuff like that mm-hmm. like or pride yeah. washing and all charity that washing mm-hmm. charity yeah. washing mm-hmm. big time and um and Pink like, washing, isn't that what they call mm-hmm. it? Yeah, sort of. Um, so, like, um, I'm very aware that there is people that exploit it. Mm-hmm. So there is a natural, um, like, hesitation to get yeah. involved with um, a white, straight, cis man, you yeah. know, who, like, who apparently wants to be involved in the yeah. world. It's like, what's what's your ulterior motive mm-hmm. here? Mm-hmm. And, and I get that. So I'm, I'm willing to, like, to be like, 
okay, like I'm gonna just show you subtly that like I'm not here for anything else. Yeah. yeah. Well, we 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 appreciate it so much. We we'll see that. It, we can feel that. Yeah. Like, uh, it's not it's not even like it's, that. Th- those those two elements are so huge and so important. But you know, and this is like this is like the the Sean show where we like heap lots of praise on you with trying Love not it. to scum. Yeah, yeah. But it's 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 so it's so heartfelt and meant. But it, there's an additional level to that as well. In that you know, even with what we do and the world that we work in, the fact that we're queer, the fact that we're like anti-capitalist, the fact that we're like all of the things that we are in the world that we're in and the things that we try and talk about. That's an additional barrier for a lot of people. Yeah. You know, there's like we've, you know, make we say like, you know, being like too woke to joke and things like that. And we've we've talked on the podcast before about comedy and humor and things like that and about issues that are happening in the world and inequality. And that's also quite a difficult thing for a lot of people to be able to interact with conversationally. And for us, it's like it's this additional level of safety and comfort with you. And because in terms of like your your life and your work and all of the things that you deliberately make yourself aware of and then can speak knowledgeably on that is like for us we're kind of like where did you even come from how are you how are you in this world that we've got to meet you because i actually don't imagine that we could do this podcast in this way with anybody else yeah do you know what we're I mean? very like, grateful for you. that. I know we tell like, you that all yeah. the time, I'm, but I'm, we are very grateful for that. I'm, I'm yeah. very lucky to have met you and uh, and to have like we know. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> I I, lo- I love because like, how often as adults can you like meet people that you you just uh, that's what that's what makes arts and and like this world that we're in yeah, yeah. amazing it, it, yeah just just for your own well-being yeah is that you meet people like you two that yeah. you, you you understand and like that are like-minded that yeah are like-minded in the arena yeah. And, yeah. and 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 also make you better yeah. yeah like we'll pull each other up i think that's yeah. a big part for us it's sort of building a community of like-minded people so we can yeah. support each other so that we can share skills so that we can do all sorts of stuff um we have so many plans uh, moving forward for uh, for podcasts for people to start their own for maybe other locations for um, maybe I, I mean I you mentioned the pit, pit, pit stop that that's also my uh, sort of reference point I have watched that show for years just grow and develop from a little basement to like they had the black set to then n- now that kind of the level of theming that they bring um, per season and the edit that comes through it those little like snappy sort of whip signs and mm-hmm. the duck quacks and yeah. all of it um, and then like a, an eagle coming in and like grabbing the set and lifting it yeah. <laughs> that love that it's amazing yeah. but it's those types of things that you you sort of you, you see and you, th- you you know that um, for all that they've got a bloody massive budget and it's, it's a, it's a very successful show that you can uh, if you're creative enough uh, uh, make that happen you know that you can you can aspire to that that it's not out of reach mm-hmm. that it's not something that only those people can do mm-hmm. you know yeah. it's um, it's possible and we are so we're just we're so um, we're so proud of what we're doing here we really are we really love it mm-hmm. so thank you I don't want to I know that we're we're uh, going to have to to wrap up very soon but I don't want to do that without asking you uh, Sean we do a wee segment. You may have heard of it called oh, Show and Tell Some Love. <laughs> we had asked you um, to bring something in. Do you have you a Show something? and Tell Some Love? I've, I've got something here, right? Um, because uh, I looked about the house when I went in last night and nothing was really standing out to me, but I had something in mind when I was ah, coming down here. Gorgeous. Okay. <laughs> Where'd you get this coffee? Unbelievable. It's uh, good, Bailey's. isn't it? It's actually from Bailey's. Bailey's. Yeah, we have a partnership with them. They're fantastic. So Bailey's <laughs> have supported us for years and given us uh, all, a load of beans from the roastery, loads of equipment and things in order to um, keep us caffeinated. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> it's actually, um, it's Diet Coke. <laughs> Yeah, we're just, I don't, I don't want to lie, we're not, we're... Yeah, we're not um, scoundrels, but we do have a partnership so, with Bailey's. Sometimes it is Bailey's, yeah. sometimes yeah. it is, but yeah, not in our, always. In our, in, our, in our space, it's Bailey's. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Show and Tell Some Love um, is a segment that we um, occasionally do. Mm-hmm. Um, 
we're going to get get much better at sort of setting up those segments mm-hmm. uh, with every guest because um, we just talk too much yeah. often. Um, <laughs> we're somewhat verbose. We're doing it right now. <laughs> um, but uh, we ask uh, every time we have a guest uh, and if we have the time to do it, we'll ask them to bring uh, something that means something to them um, and that they can uh, tell a little story about. What have, you, um, what have you brought today? I've brought a Zoom R8 portable... A studio slash recorder, uh, MIDI controller. It, right, Let me it's, see him. It's uh, so Ooh. what you, you need to know first is I'm a big nerd, right? Um, and um, yeah. <laughs> and for me, this wee piece of kit is like one of the things that like set me in motion to do this type of work that I'm doing yeah. today. Um, so uh, when I was like. I don't know what it changed in me. Like when I was like a kid, it was like, "Oh, you're going to be a footballer." Yeah, you know, like that. That's... Was that your dream? Did you want to be a, fit- a footballer? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And like, and and that's like, it's default. It's like very yeah. default character. Um, for like a, a young boy, like is that? Oh, he's going to be a footballer. Yeah, you yeah. know, and you're put into a football team and like stuff like that. And I was all right. I, actually, I played for Cliftonville when I was younger wow. and stuff. Yeah. And I was doing all the right things. Yeah. And it was my dream at the time. And um, and then I got a really bad injury uh, to my knee. And so then I couldn't play for more. Uh-huh. And Isn't uh, that terrible? Just one wrong slide. Yeah. yeah. Or whatever it is. Uh, it wasn't know. even playing football. It was playing Gaelic then. I was oh. playing against Ardoin. Oh my course. God. And... Um, <laughs> And I jumped up the couch ball and came back down and like just snapped it wrong. Yeah. Ah. Uh, so like um, after that, I it, it was the first day of summer, right? Heartbreaking. And so I couldn't go out with my friends and stuff. Oh, and terrible. Stuff. So I stayed in the house and like played the PlayStation and learned guitar. Mm-hmm. And so like then I was like, okay, so I need to go and look at the careers book again. And like, uh-huh. I'm not going to be a footballer now. Like, what am I going to be? And uh, I saw, um, this is in like second year, and I saw like this page that said sound engineer. Yeah. And read it and it was like, and I love music. My my mommy always had me like listening to their like hippie records. Uh-huh. Like, and I was obsessed with Jimi Hendrix and Mark Bolan and T-Rex. And yes. Like, um, so that I was like music but I don't have to be a musician I can sit there and listen to amazing music being made yeah. either performed or being recorded and I'll be in a studio like I was like I would love that so yeah. like I decided then I, that's what I want to do and yes. so and like it led it naturally it sort of spoke to me because um, my mommy had like these hi-fi systems but never like a purred like piece yeah. within it you know what yeah. I mean she would always pick things up from like second hand shops yeah. Or yeah. Shops. <laughs> yeah so I like I had no like one of those no like explosion sound system yes. like, that I yeah. here it was sort of like out oh, in my shed where like I just had these random speakers cool. that I would power up with like different amplifiers and like and different turntables and stuff and just left out all my mess Rod Stewart finals and like um, and put them on or like T-Rex or um, whatever else and lived my best life just listening to them at the back oh. and it as loud as humanly possible and blew them up you blew um, them up? yeah oh. and then she would have to go to another Charlie shop and try and find another freaking speaker or record player and uh, so I was like I already know how to do some of this stuff yeah. but so then I started asking for like wee pieces of of kit you know so like microphones and um, um, and like recorders and amplifiers, and so every birthday, instead of me getting like games or yeah. like or what other people were getting like football stuff and um whatever else, you're building your kit. I was I had been building this from I was like thirteen. Oh wow! So like uh, like some like loads of the stuff that's in here is still stuff that I like asked for for Christmas and for yeah. birthdays. Um, and it's still stuff that I use now. Yeah, you know? that's class. Um, and this is one of them. This is one of the first things I asked for because it was like I had started to play a bit of music, um, and I started playing in a few wee bands, and I was going like, ah, oh, like we've written this song. It's the best song in the world, you know. Like it's going to be number one. Um, but I can't afford to go into a studio. Yeah. How am I going to do it? If I just got this, 
this solves my problem. I'm going to record it on this and then we're going to be rock stars. Yes. So, um, because of all I got the speakers and the microphone. and, and It's also. powerful to be able to do that for yourself though. And to yeah. learn those skills, yeah. you know, to be self-sufficient that you can just set up and do the thing, you know. So I got this and um, sat out my back for like months. On end, just making me demos and like recording stuff and recording fake interviews, like yes, people. Class. And so, like, this, um, has is just been like this was my like introduction to all of that. And I ended up going to like this wee um weekend course in Queens when I was in like third year or something where mm-hmm. I go every Saturday and um. And it was free and stuff. I can't believe it. Like this was this thing was available. Yeah, so niche. Uh, yeah. Like um, it was like production and sound engineering. Um, and I was able to go there every Saturday before I went down and met all my mates in town, and they taught me how to like produce like music, how to like make dubstep was the thing at the time. Oh yeah. yes, it was like how to make dubstep beats and like, uh, and I was here, and I just became obsessed uh-huh. with this whole world. Um, and this is one of the things that started it. Um, and I got it for Christmas. And the Coles' uh, birthday um, is Boxing Day. So like the uh, first uh, first year we were together when we were fifteen, uh, turning I was sixteen. The Cole was turning sixteen the day after Christmas, and uh, and I just got this. And I stayed up all night the day of getting it. I made like these four wee demos of like covers. Yeah. Of our favorite like emo songs oh baby you're so oh romantic God. it's so it's sweet that ever. is so gorgeous <laughs> I'm bit off way more than I can chew I could chew and I was up to like three in the morning finishing it and that was like I made her we like burnt away CD of it on the computer and then that was like part of her like oh baby present. that is that so is amazing. sweet so like oh. and I, I so this plays a really lovely we like space in, in my heart because yeah. like I'll still use it for some stuff. It's dusty as all fuck, but yeah. like it'll still come in use every now and again. And yeah. it's, it's just crazy. It just all this stuff didn't just come from like getting yeah. a grant or like having yeah. Yeah. like uh, a lump sum from mommy and daddy just to go yeah. like go, yes. go and start your business. So yeah. it, like this has been in the works for yeah. like it's 12, it's, 13 years. Same for so much of our, our equipment and things. Yeah. You know, there's, there's there's so many parts. I remember previously we spoke to you about an amp. Yeah. Um, that you got and it sort of changed a lot. But same for us, you know, there's just certain things that actually, um, like you say, there it's not some grant. It's not just throw away money. You're not trying to, there's a lot of charities and businesses and, and uh, individuals out there that are like trying to spend the money. They're yeah. like, oh, what can I buy? We've never really been in that no. space. Hopefully someday it'd be lovely and we're just, <laughs> we've got a list that we can just check things off. Yeah. But it really is. It's things that we need that are going to really change our world that we um, that will be very useful. That well, actually, what you're saying about being sort of more independent of not necessarily having to go into a studio, but uh, for us to invest in something like a t-shirt press yeah. or a mm-hmm. screen print and something, so that we can so, so we can be self um, sufficient, mm-hmm. um, is, it can be a real game a game changer. Yeah. You know, yeah. for anyone that's listening or watching and and you can't see um, the rest of this uh, studio space, we're based in Blackstaff, Melbourne. Say that all the time. It's a cool but, room. Uh, yeah, there's just there's stuff everywhere. There's bits and there's amps and there's mm-hmm. uh, a couple of different sets. Um, Talking of the talking of the sets and sort of where from this to what you do now because all of that's so relevant. Even just talking about like your fake interviews and now you're um, doing interviews. You're doing that. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like it's really your job. You're producing that for mm-hmm. other people. Um, who who overall do you? Uh, what podcasts overall do you produce right now? There's yes, Mudblood. I was going to ask that. Mudblood, Cork and the North. I'll go chronologically. Mudblood, Cork and the North. Love Cork um, in the North. We've mm-hmm. got uh, Let's Face It, Donal Nugent. So you yes. Yes. So uh, Donal makes a podcast. It's I'll, I'll explain a bit more about Donal just because I love his mission and uh, might not have like the following some of the others have, but it is, his story is very important. Uh, Donal is um, a, a recovering alcoholic. Mm-hmm. So he's in recovery and um, has been off like... Uh, and also narcotics and stuff like that and um it's just sort of out there to try and share people's positive stories and Great. it might be people that have gone through trauma people who have uh, gone through addiction and stuff or are recovering an addiction themselves um and just sort of spreading stories of resilience but also mm-hmm. of um of 
maybe uh, I can't find a word of like you know telling you when, when things aren't like a hundred percent yeah that you, not everybody has to be a hundred percent there or a hundred percent out and um so imperfectness but it's taken those yes. learnings from uh, uh, so many of the recovery programs and then being able to say that out loud and hopefully help yeah. someone out there that isn't part of one of those or doesn't have the access mm-hmm. to it yeah and then i've got whiskey and white mm-hmm. um the lads tommy and tyrone mm-hmm. yeah i've got word up in front of them mm-hmm. yeah that show some love life oh, yeah. Stop but yeah. and, like i love that we line up um, yeah it's great um, my I love Cork in the North is not a read to anyone else yeah <laughs> I just, there's just something um, about how Andrew sort of puts together mm-hmm. um, well, we watch how all you guys podcasts. together put together mm-hmm. a, um, a show but we watch them all mm-hmm. we, um, we haven't sort of... watched Let's Face It yet but we will uh, I made a note of it one day and I think I wrote it down wrong and then I went to Google yes, it we searched it because we did yeah because yeah. you told got us, it wrong you told us a story before it was sort of thought oh we'll go and we'll go and yeah. watch that but we We're watch like, all the rest of them don't know it's a legend now like um He's very busy, so he does some season to season, mm. ra- like when he can fit it in. Um, yeah, mm. but doesn't always get the chance to do it, so it's a bit less regular. But um, I'm hoping that he, he's like in a new sort of position now, where we're gonna like change it up a bit. So I'm hoping there's a Great. bit more let's face it to come. Cool. Love it. Well, I think it's really important to say as well. Like, hopefully, people kind of get it from like what we do and who we are and all the rest of it. But like, there's not a huge. Uh, we have yet. I think to find like a regular queer uh, fronted or whatever podcast. We're the first local. in the world to get over it. <laughs> but that's, you know, from uh, from the province or but even from, from this Belfast, perspective, yeah. you know, like um, maybe if there are more, please tell us. We would love to watch them. We'd love to support them. Uh, but if there's not, but if it's something that if you like a bit of what we do, but you've got another idea and you want to go and do something yourself, but you're sort of maybe a bit scared to interact with that world as, as we kind of have been in the past as yes. well, then or if you're um, if you're a woman, if you're a person of colour, if you have got a disability, if you are any of within the marginalised groups and you have struggled to interact with uh, with the world of podcasting and you want to give it a crack, then uh, reach out to Sean at 1620 uh, Studios, uh, 1620 Productions. So you can search 1620 like, Audio on your social yeah. platforms and find Sean. Yeah, we will link the life out of this below this yeah. podcast, but uh, reach out and make a phone yeah. call and we're obviously like major proponents and advocates of what you do and anything else that we ever do in the future you will it, be involved my god this sounds a wee bit like an ad we're actually not sponsored by Sean today <laughs> <laughs> um, it's sort of like yeah I feel like we're we're you've got a you've got a gun under this yeah. table <laughs> yeah but, uh, I'm actually see it gives me like so much anxiety when you say you push people towards those socials because I'm like, oh God, I don't even know what's on there. Uh, but, but, see, see, to be honest, it hasn't needed a lot of... Yeah. Um, it's a contact point. Like, yeah, I, that's it. There's not fr- nothing really on there. I'll just like share like clips that mm-hmm. you guys put up and yeah. stuff on it. Like yeah. that's... Um, and it, it's just because like all of this is all just came from word of mouth and like... Yeah. And, yeah. Um, the best way. And knowing people. So it's not... I've, I haven't really had to be in that position yet where I'm like come to my business you know like mm-hmm. putting ads up and stuff and getting people yeah. to mm-hmm. so that's where you want to be I know mm-hmm. it, yeah. it is good like that but um, I might get, be at that stage at some point when it maybe mm-hmm. expands a bit more but mm-hmm. well someday well, yeah. in the future uh, mm-hmm. um, and it may look exactly like this and would still be all buzz for you but someday mm-hmm. in the future we um we could be in a BuzzFeed, uh, what's called BuzzFeed mm-hmm. uh, style <laughs> office yeah. with a load yeah. of fucking um a load of Gen Z uh, whiz kids <laughs> into yeah. sound. Yeah. Um, we're all creating things and we're making things and there's someone mm. building sets. And, and they're getting a pet a good wage. Yes, yeah. that's and the thing. In terms are not working for nothing. And yeah. you are too. You know yeah. that you are driving <laughs> some fucking gorgeous car. And mm-hmm. um, do you drive actually? I do drive, yeah. yeah. Oh, so that's not a comment on your car. Did, I've never <laughs> seen it. It could, all, it could already yeah. be. I don't know what a fancy car yeah. is. Um, but yeah, we, um, we're we really looking forward to, mm-hmm. to sort of to, to, mm-hmm. to continuing on this journey with you mm-hmm. yeah well yes thank you so much Thanks Sean. For having i have loved this so much and it's been such a long time coming uh so yes we're the timing of it was so beautiful as well with us being at your gig last night and stuff as well so make sure you get on so search search, search party as well That's we we've sort of been edging you here for about half an hour that we're <laughs> that we're going to sign off but um i think it goes without saying uh it, uh, support for us is seriously valued um, we are a charity and a social enterprise that work in the city and we supply uh, clothing and toiletries and underwear to people that need it. We've got a massive
project that was sort of teased a little bit and we've, we've, we've said a little bit about on our social media more if that's coming out soon we're going to have a podcast special on it mm-hmm. but if you've got some money we would love it mm-hmm. if you want to drop in your items that we need uh, we would also love that too mm-hmm. um, and if you want to join our community um, get on board uh, there's lots of ways to do that um, and we would also love people to volunteer the time to help us uh, mm-hmm. make it all happen mm-hmm. so uh, with that being said have a fucking wonderful time whoever's listening or watching out there mm-hmm. and we will see you next week yeah show some love <laughs> Thank you.